the negative effects will take over in my body. Amen. But the revelation then gives me something to go off of. Amen. Mm -hmm. I can get the revelation that Jesus is love. And so when other people start acting the fool, I can just say, you know what? It don't even matter. Mm -hmm. Because God loves me. All right. That's my revelation right. today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. There's all kinds of revelations that we can get from the word of God. And so this year, from the first of the year until today, I've been receiving revelation after revelation after revelation. I got a little notebook and I'm starting to write some stuff down because these are some important things. But listen, I said I've been going through. You all know that I have a son. And Lord have mercy, my one son, he keeps me on my knees. Amen. Mm -hmm. And God has been giving me revelation even on his situation. And so I'm having to learn how to step back and say, you know what, God? I can't do nothing with this. I've got to leave him up to you. That's and right. so I have to know that myself. Because, baby, let me tell you something. When your children start acting the fool, when your children start doing stuff that they ain't got no business, I mean, it's like you be trying to sleep at night and your head just be turning okay. on the head. All right. That's the name of God. Sometimes the tears won't stop coming from your eyes because they're doing stuff or saying things or being with people, amen, that you know ain't no good for. Yeah. And you just have to sit down and say, God, I can't handle this. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like I'm going crazy. But sometimes what you've got to learn how to do is say, God, I'm going to take my hands off of this. Apostle Paul and how he said I would not have you to be 
ignorant, mm -hmm. brethren. He wants us to have knowledge. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in all that getting, get and understanding. Yeah. Some are in a great storm mentally, physically, <coughs> emotionally, financially. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to learn how to move into our stable place. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to be in a stable place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Where even though it comes, I'm not going to be torn up. Even though it comes, I'm not going to be wavering in my faith. I want to stand still and watch the salvation of the living God. Even Ooh. Moses did when he stood and had to put that staff so that the Red Sea can part. Uh -huh. To know that if God said that we're going to go into the wilderness mm. so that we can worship God, that we're going to get there. Amen. Doesn't matter if Pharaoh's army is behind me and the Red Sea is All in front right. of me. But I know because he said it that I can trust him. Yeah. Because he's never failed me yeah. yet. All right. Jesus. Your first task in choosing an anchor in the natural is to have an understanding of three things. First of all, you've got to have an understanding of your boat. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Your boat size, weight, and design characteristics affect what kind of anchor that you're mm -hmm. going to need to use. Mm -hmm. For instance, a 30-foot, 10,000-pound houseboat needs a larger anchor than a 30-foot, 6,000-pound speedboat. That's right. What exactly is my problem? How big is my problem? Amen? Mm. Uh, what's my situation, and where am I planning to go with this? Mm -hmm. And then those are questions that we've got to learn to ask ourselves. That's right. Because if we don't ask it, amen, we're going to find ourselves tossed and turning and wondering which way is... Up.